Okay, today I want to talk about how to build a node server that can serve up static files. And that means your CSS files, your JavaScript files, your images, those aren't files that you're necessarily going to be dynamically creating on the server using Node. They're just files that you've already built. Maybe you've used SAS and you've generated the CSS file. Maybe you've used Babel and you've generated your JavaScript file. But the files that are leaving the server going back to the client aren't being changed at the time when they're being requested. So they are static files. Now typically what you would do is you would have a folder where you store these static files. Maybe you've got an API here that's building dynamically other files, but I'll have a place. Maybe I'll have other folders inside of here, but I'm going to put static files in one place where I know where they all are. So my static server, we're going to start off with the same basic server that we have in the previous node videos where I'm bringing in HTTP, I'm bringing in URL. Those are the core node modules that I'm bringing in. We're going to use the file system module as well. This is what we're going to use to pass these to the user. So HTTP URL, we create our server. We've got the request and the response object being passed in there. And down at the bottom, we've got our typical listen method. I've just picked port 1234 just as a random number. That's the port that I'm going to be listening on. So in my browser, I can go to HTTP localhost colon 1234, and that's going to be the root of the web server. So that's going to be a request coming to this file once it's running. Okay, I'm going to be taking the URL that's passed in through the request object. I'm going to call the parse method on the URL object. And since this is the only thing that we're using here, we could, if we wanted, just do dot parse and then have a parse word right here, a variable called parse, and then that's the parse method that we're calling here. That would be another way of doing this. I'll show you again with another import how we could do that. In any case, we're getting the URL. This is going to be what comes after HTTP colon, uh, HTTP colon localhost colon 1234. Whatever comes after that, that's what we're going to be getting with this parsed URL. Now, that could be a slash. It could be a slash and a word and another slash. It could be a series of slashes. It's paths and file names. That's what the parsed URL is going to be. Now, what I'm going to do to just sort of standardize that I get the same thing every time, I'm going to strip off any slash at the beginning and any slash at the end. And that's what this next line does. I'm doing the replace method on the string. And this is a regular expression to say, okay, anything that begins with one or more forward slashes or ends with one or more forward slashes globally, meaning keep searching till you find them all at the beginning or the end and replace them with nothing. So I'm stripping those all off. That means I'm going to be getting requests that don't have a leading or trailing slash. Okay, that's just to standardize things. Now, I'm going to check and see if the path is empty because maybe the person did a request and said, okay, I want to get the path this, or I want to get the path index.html, or maybe they passed in nothing at all, or they're going to say, I want main.css, or I want main.js, or an image. These are all the possible values that I'm going to be responding to within my code. So for the cases where it's blank or it was just slash and we stripped the slash off with this replace method, I want to check for that. And if it is that, I'm going to change my path. I'm going to take this variable. I'm going to rewrite it as index.html and say, okay, if you haven't given me a file, if it's blank or it's just a slash, I'm going to give you index.html. All right. So that's our request for the root. I'm going to log out for myself in the console. This is the thing that was being requested. And then I'm going to use my global variable that's available in node, dir name. It's going to give me the path up to this folder that I'm in. And then I'm going to add public. And then I'm going to add path. That's the actual file that's being named. So these ones right here inside my public folder. The user doesn't know that they're in a public folder and they don't need to know where they are. It just for my code, this is where I'm going to get the static files. Okay, now the file system. I'm going to use the async method, not the synchronous method, because I don't want to wait, force 
all subsequent requests to wait for the first one to be processed. I'm going to make it asynchronous so the request for the file can be set aside and processed while I'm dealing with the next possible request. All right, now inside of here, we have the file is being passed in. That is the full path for the file that we're going to return. And then the callback function, this is the asynchronous callback function. When that is completed, it's going to come back to the main JavaScript stack and it's going to be processed. If there was an error, I'm going to do this. I'm going to log out for myself in the console that, hey, there was an issue um, when this file was requested. And then back to the client, I'm going to send a 404 error and no content whatsoever. So let's test that one out. So I'm going to save this and we're going to open up our terminal. There we go. And we're going to run the server. There it is. We're listening on port 1234. Now I can jump over into the browser. Here we are. And I just refresh this. So localhost 1234 with nothing requested. We're getting our index.html. But if I requested something that didn't exist, this is what we're getting back. So let's clear that and we'll run this one more time. There we go. We sent back a 404 error message when we requested this. Here's the 404 error message coming back. Now, if I click on this request, we can look at it. We can say a request for this URL was sent. 404 came back, but there was no content in the response. There was no content that came back. It was just a 404 error message. So what Chrome does what browsers do is they've got this default content that they're going to display. If they get a 404 error message back, this is what Chrome displays. Now there's a whole bunch of things inside of here. There is a PNG file for this image right here. So this is a uh, an image. There's also a bunch of other images that we're not seeing. And these are base64 encoded images, which is just a string version of an image that the browser knows how to read and interpret. These ones that we have in here, those are actually for, if you've ever played the game where you're, you're running along in the desert with a dinosaur jumping over cacti, um, that is content that's built into the browser. So if you're offline, that's the content that's going to be displayed. And there's some audio files that are um, done that way as well. If we come in here and we look inside the content, so we've got the body, the main frame, and then this subframe error, this is if we're not online. There is the icons, and inside of here, I think it is, oh, sorry, the offline resources, that's the one I wanted to look at. Inside of here, we've got some images, and there's also, inside of here, some audio files. So these audio files are sounds that will play even if you're offline. And you can see right here, the source is data colon audio slash MPEG, base64. So this is a string version of an audio file. Just like up here, we have a base64 string version of a couple of images. And that's what these, back in the network tab here, that's what these are right here. It's the offline content. All right, so we're a little bit off track here, but We've got the fact that we've got 404 errors are being handled whenever we can't open a file that's being requested. Now, this is the file that we do want. Now, in this one, let's clear up the cache here. There we go. So the HTML file is being requested. And then inside the HTML file, because we're requesting a CSS file and inside the body, we're requesting a JavaScript file, those are also going to be requested by the browser and they are being requested from our server. And if you look at the URLs, you can see localhost1234 slash main.js slash main.css. There's no public folder here. The browser knows nothing about this public folder. It just knows that when it requested the HTML file at the root, they got that file back, they read it, and inside it said, hey, wherever the HTML file came from, that's where there's going to be a CSS file and a JavaScript file too. Okay, so back into our code here. That was the error. We got the 404 error. And if we don't get that, if there was no error opening the file, it means we do have the file. 
so we're able to write returning. And then down in the log here, you can see returning main.css and JavaScript. Now I'm setting a few headers here. I'm setting this one, no sniff. This one is telling the browser, don't try to determine for yourself what the content type of these files is. I am going to explicitly tell you. Now my code here, because I've only got three files, I've wrote this in kind of a ver verbose way. I have hard coded the MIME type for the CSS file, the JavaScript file, and the HTML file. This is not something you want to do if you've got a lot of static files. So instead of doing this where we're looking at every possible file requested and setting a specific content type on them, I'm going to bring in a module. There's a module called MIME types and if you do this npm install MIME types that is going to give you a node module called MIME types and it has a method called lookup. So we're going to use that here. We're going to say const MIME types equals require MIME types. Now we can do this or we can jump ahead like I was talking about uh, earlier with URL. If we only using the parse method, why not just get that one? So that's what I'm going to do here. I only want the function lookup from inside of this module. So this is going to be inside of here. This is now a method that I can use down on my page, down inside of here. Instead of going through all of this, I'm just going to say, hey, this is the file that I'm going to return right here. What is the MIME type of this thing? So we'll say let MIME equal lookup, and then we'll pass it the path to the file. Then it's going to look at the file and say, okay, this one's a CSS file. So it's text slash CSS or it's application JavaScript text slash HTML. We have that. Now I can do right head 200 and we can set the content type is going to be, oh, sorry, colon inside of here. And I can just write MIME. That's my variable that I'm using inside of here. So this MIME variable that I looked up, I'm putting that inside here as the content type. Now I don't have to do anything else. All of this can go away. I don't need any of that now because I've just brought in this module. It's doing that work for me. And if I have a hundred static files, I don't have to look at every single one of them and explicitly say what it's going to be. I've just extracted the MIME type from there. And then we're writing the content. We're sending that back. All right, now I will come in here. I will close this and run it again. Listening on port one, two, three, four. this again. Oh. Clear that. Run it again. There we go. Back to the browser. Now if I do slash enter, there's my HTML and then my JavaScript runs. That's what's turning it from the gold to the purple. If I request main.css, there it is. There's the CSS. If I ask for main.js, I get my JavaScript file. I ask explicitly for index.html. There it is. So this is all working. And that is how you can return static files. So we have the MIME types that we've added in. We used NPM to add that to our project. Uh, I know my node modules folder doesn't show up inside of here. That's I've just got it hidden uh, in VS Code. But the rest of it is just a basic server. The HTTP create server method, we strip out the path to find out what it is that we're looking for. And then we're using the file system read file. If we do find it, so if there is no error, we use that lookup method to find out the MIME type so we can write the appropriate header. And this is best practice for security. You do always want to send the MIME type back. And then just writing out the content. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, Thanks for watching.